how do you stop the Warriors? Let's be honest, that has been the question that's befuddled the entire NBA for years now. LeBron James did it once, briefly, but got so frustrated trying to do it again, he finally just up and left for Cleveland. He left up and left Cleveland. Chris Paul knocked his head against the Warriors so many times, he left for Houston, but that didn't help because it turned out that the Rockets didn't have the answer to the Warriors either, despite basically dedicating an entire franchise's worth of resources to trying to take Golden State down. Damian Lillard has tried, been flattened, tried again, been flattened. At some points, it has felt like the Warriors' dominance would just never end, which is why sitting here right now feels so weird. Is this what it felt like watching the fall of Rome? Are, are we really witnessing the end of the Golden State dynasty? And is this how they're going to go out? With a year that started with Draymond Green calling Kevin Durant names and, and could be ending with three straight losses at Oracle and Durant 3,000 miles away in New York? You know how in a James Bond movie, the villain captures one of the heroes and then for no reason at all recites his whole evil plan? <laughs> I've always kind of pictured Daryl Morey in that role in this scenario when it comes to Golden State, except I honestly don't think even he could have dreamed this one up. That the Warriors would start the season <laughs> suspending one of their best players. That the Clippers, their longtime personal doormats, would be the first ones to take a bite out of the dynasty this postseason. And yeah, we have said for years that one of the only ways for Golden State to falter was if one of their all-stars was injured. But the specifics of Kevin Durant going down are way beyond what anyone could have predicted. The Warriors returning to a completely different style of basketball without him, prompting a wave of nostalgia for Steph Curry's MVP years, only to have the Warriors take another injury hit in the finals with Clay. Then get him back, then get Kevin back, only to lose Kevin again in a way that took a franchise whose management has been nothing but praised for half a decade and opened it up to endless second guessing and finger pointing. None of it feels very Warriors-ish, nor does the Toronto team that could end up being their kryptonite look anything like what we expected. <laughs> We were told for years that the only way to take Golden State head on was to fight them superstar for superstar. But the Raptors are not a super team in any way. They are a good old fashioned, well, basketball team, one with a super elite player surrounded by a real mix of depth and talent. And the other night they came within three minutes of ending this thing in five games, which for the Warriors would have been the definition of going out with a whimper. Of course, that didn't happen. And it didn't happen because, well, yeah, I know that weird Toronto timeout, but mainly it didn't happen because Steph and Clay did the exact thing the Warriors have been defined by for all these years. They hit ridiculous under pressure threes to puncture their opponents' hopes and dreams. And honestly, that's what I hope we get more of tomorrow night. And I want to be clear. I am not saying I hope the Warriors win. I am saying that if they lose this series, and the odds are still heavy that they will lose this series, I hope that they at least go out looking like the Warriors, the group that spent years dazzling us with their teamwork and innovation and joy. Even a Bond villain would agree, they've earned that. And as the fans who've had the past five years of our lives dominated by this team, so have we.